Great one shallow, way gonna help with this work and stuff on the earth Feel like I was cursing on my words, so I had the spirits birth cool. Once again, be careful who you calling a friend Watch these snakes and slimy, so never let them slither the in If they think you got it, watch how fast they placing their bids in Along with 12, get buried in mud, I'm finna pig pen No slug shot, I'm just aiming while you're reaching Watch practice while I'm preaching, I'm a student and a teacher Please Follow believe me. me, we need more leaders than the followers Building with each other is only gonna strengthen our power yes. up And that will tell they power up yes. When we quit killing each other, move as a unit And stop pushing them flowers up, don't yes. you know that empower us? Oh, yes. The force of hip hop is alive and it's moving freely right inside of us. We yeah. don't need no handouts. No handouts, so yeah, we got it. We so gon' get this cash now. We gon' hustle every day till we get it. We don't need no handouts. Oh, now, little buddy, look, we good. We gon' get that cash now. We gon' hustle every day till we get it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Another night with Crowded Music. Right now, we got BMT Hustlers, Big Luck, jumping on with us. Uh, Going to talk about his music career, where he's from, and how he got started in the music game, and the work he's put out. And you can find all his music on Crowded Streaming app. Just go to your app store, put in Crowded Music, download the app. Um... You want to get your music on, download the app, send us an email to crowdedmusicshare at gmail.com. We'll get your artist profile created, uh, get you up and going, and we do pay artists for streams. So any artists out there looking to get paid for their streams, not looking to get independent artists, uh, make sure you download the app and we can get going. All right, we got BMT Hustlers, big luck. Joining us now, Big Luck. What's going on, man? What's going on, man? Man, glad to have you with us tonight with Crowded Music. Appreciate you coming on with us tonight. For sure, man. For sure. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. So, hey, let's jump right into it, man. Uh, tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you got started in music. Man, I'm out here in Beaumont, you know what I'm saying? Big Money, Texas. And, you know, I always been around music for the longest, bro. Like, uh, growing up as a youngster, my homeboy, you know what I'm saying? My big brother, Big Bub, shout out Big Bub, UGK Records. From Port Arthur. You know what I'm saying? They would all, yeah, from PA, yeah. Yeah, he always, you know what I'm saying, be around freestyling. I'm like, man, I got to get on that one day, you know. And 
it just happened. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so tell us about tell us about your movement, who you're working with, what music you putting out. Well, I'm rocking with BMT Hustles all day. You know, that started with my homeboy Schizo some years ago. You know, I used to be with a group called Affiliated, and um, you know, different um things change in life with different people. You know, and I found Schizo, man, and we've been locked in ever since. And you know, working with some different artists. Like I just dropped a song um not too long ago called Fuck It Up, where I ten Slim and that boy Gif. You know, they. They hooked me up on that track, man. They did their thing with that. Who'd you work with on that? Who's who produced it? How long has been out? Tell us about it. Uh, it's been out about man, maybe about a week or two now, actually. And um, I got productions, you know what I'm saying? Just searching the internet, actually, man. And forgive me if I can't remember their name right now. No, that's 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 the new thing, man. I, I see a lot of artists nowadays grabbing their beats and uh, their production right off the internet. Hey. That's good yeah. for producers if they do it the right way and get their paperwork together. They can still get paid off of they, you know, off of their work. It ain't like they getting robbed. So it's nothing wrong yeah. with that, man. Yeah, and actually, you know what? Let me correct something. The beat I got off the internet, the productions was done by Juice out there in H Town. Okay, shout out to Juice putting it in, putting in work. Okay, that's yeah for sure. So. Yeah. Okay, so so tell us about the BMT Hustlers movement. Man, with the BMT Hustles movement, man, we we strictly independent. You know, we had a we got people always looking at us, you know, and, and digging and stuff. You know, there's ways of finding that, but we strictly independent, man. And you know, we try to work with a lot of artists as much as possible, especially out here in Beaumont and surrounding areas. Yeah, I know Beaumont right now is a gold mine for independent artists. So I yeah, think Beaumont got a lot of talent getting ready to come out of there right now. So. I hope to oh, yeah, get ready for that. Yeah, for sure. Like uh look, 409 J, man, she doing her thing. You know, she she's spitting bars. Shout you got uh 409 J, we're gonna have to get her on the crowd in the crowded room, man. Get her Oh yeah, you know we pass the word along. Yeah, definitely. We gotta get her on here. Uh uh, so you guys you said y'all y'all come across so you saying y'all come across deals and y'all turning them down and staying independent or you said because they hearing about y'all so what's going on with that well we ain't let me, let me correct something we ain't come across like we ain't turn down no deals but we know that they got people watching you know keeping them an eye on us and stuff like there was a recent contact made to us supposedly from an a and r from Def, from dev jam you know and Really just trying to see what that's talking about, you know, because we already know what we expect from ourselves and what we aiming for. And, you know, really just like I said, we stick to that plan and everything else fall in line with it. So are you guys are you guys actively looking for a deal, looking to stay independent? What's going on? with? No, nah, actually, we, we, we looking to stay independent all the way, bro. Like I just recently bought some studio equipment to keep it 100 percent. You know what I mean? Yeah, I actually interviewed a guy recently, and he was speaking on how important it is for artists to have their own studio and not be going to the yeah. label studio every time they want to record a song, every time they want to make a beat or, you know, get into the artist mode that it's important you have your own studio because when you walk into the yeah. studio, the clock is ticking and you're paying for that clock. Yeah, exactly. And then you got to move on their time. So if they choose to take a smoke break or whatever, you know, the clock's still moving, even though we do business a little different than that. I understand that. So so tell me about your latest uh, project, your latest album, and, and BMT Hustlers. I mean, run it down. Who's all BMT Hustlers? Is it just you? I heard you mention Schizo. Is it, I mean, is it a group? Or are you in a group and also a solo act? Tell us everything. We want to know. Yeah, basically, BMT Hustlers is me and my homie Schizo, you know what I'm saying? He started this whole movement. I left, well, affiliated, you know what I'm saying? It no longer exists anymore. And I like what Schizo was doing, you know what I'm saying? I seen his hustle, his drive, everything, you know? So it's just really me and him right now. But I do also do solo projects as well as he does, too. You know, we, we just try to stay motivated and keep the music going, you know, for hip-hop. Okay, so so what is the what is the project you guys working on right now? Well, the latest project I just dropped a, a single called "Cause and Effect." You know, "Cause and Effect." And uh, 
Yeah, it, cause and effect, you know, that whole from the 16 to the hook, because it's, it's very short, but it's straight to the point. It explains itself, you know, um, how I was feeling and how most of the world is feeling right now with all these injustices going on around and, you know, those type of dealings of crooked cops and dirty cops and all that. So I just felt the need to air it out because it's much bigger than what some people may see. And um, so really so just... Tell us about the song. Well, like I said, um, it, it's about the injustice of George Floyd, you know what I'm saying? Ahmaud Arbery, rest in peace to them. And just pointing out some things that sometimes the media are not going to show us or tell us. Like the dirty district attorney, Jackie Johnson, that's handling the Ahmaud Arbery case, you know. She, she's not doing her job. She drug her feet. She told the cops not to arrest him and covered up other things before that even happened with other officers that was under her. It's really like I try to watch what I say, but really bring it to people's attention. They need to Google this woman. See, see all the dirtiness she done done, you know, the same woman that was handling the case for Ahmaud Arbery. Right. Right. Okay, so you're saying your music speaks to the people. You got something to say. You got a message in your music. It's not just you getting up there saying, you know, uh, I got a nice car and a nice hat and meet me here at the club. But you're saying you yeah. to people more than that. You're giving them some stuff, some sub substance, something they can stick to, something they can listen to, right? Yeah, right. for sure. Like straight, straight honesty, truth, you know what I'm saying, from the heart. And it is what it is. Like you could clearly see it going on. Everything that I spoke on that song, right? So, so let me ask you this too, because I, I was think I'm, and I may if I'm wrong, correct me. But is it uh, true you don't use profanity in your music anymore? For the most part, I don't. Okay. For like mixtape stuff, you know, I might slip. I might slide something in there just to express myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so for the masses of. Tell me about that, because a lot of rappers, I mean, a lot of rappers most of the time have more cuss words than they do actual words in their song. So tell me how you get to, I know a rap out of you, Chameleon Air, did it years ago where he said, hey, I'm not using no more profanity. And of course, we had Will Smith who said he yeah. didn't use profanity in his music. So tell me how you got to the point where you were like, hey, you know, I'm cutting back on all that profanity. It's not necessary. Man, it was two two important things that <clears throat> changed my life with that. One thing was when I first started out rapping and writing my music, my pops would tell me he liked it, but he was like, I got a short vocabulary because I keep cursing so much. And he would tell me, you need to expand your vocabulary. So I'm like, man, I take that to heart. Let me show him my, my vocabulary bigger than that. So as I started doing that, along comes my son. You know, I, I had a little boy at the time and he would recite some of my lyrics at school right. but some of those lyrics was dirty yeah so i'm like i gotta set an example and then it was really it became a challenge to myself you know to do that to express myself without the profanity so so you're telling me actually when you said i'm not going to use profanity in my music it actually elevated your rap game and your pen game because you said hey yeah i can't just say this every other you know word i can't just exactly. say this I got to find another word, make it work, and also give the people something they can understand and listen to. Yeah, for sure, man. Like, when I started noticing it, I'm like, man, I'm getting better and better. And then I would hear the compliments on the music of how it sounds different now with change and stuff, you know. But like I said, for the most part, like, if I'm doing a mixtape or a feature for somebody else, you know, I it, it might have a little profanity in it here and there, I'm you know, not, not much stuff. I'm not against it. I'm just saying uh, I'm glad you, you, you do that because I want, I want artists to, you know, take pride in their craft. Yeah. I think that just saying these words are going to get you where you need to be because people need to listen to something more than that. And some of these top rappers or artists or entertainers that we see don't have a lot of profanity in their music because for the simple fact, if I can buy the kids can buy, the old folks can buy, then you've already yeah. and you still getting your message across, then you doing what you gotta do as an artist. Yeah, for sure. So so and, that's that's what I think about it. I mean, of course, the crowded music we support, so anybody listening, we support all music, all genres, and whatever you wanna say or whatever you wanna do, 
shout out to you. We we appreciate you. Just put your music on our platform. That's it. It's all about the artistry. Yeah. Yeah. So so keep going. Keep elaborate. Tell us. Keep going. Tell us what's going on. So what's going on right now? We in the process of you know. Shout out to Dot P Beats. Let me say that right quick. Shout out to Dot P Beats, man. I uh, connected with this brother through a family member. He out there in Cali right now. His beats is sick, you know what I mean? And we're building a new project. Hopefully, we could give him that Hotel Beaumont 2 pretty soon, you know. We're working on that. That's the next move, you know. The, the first Hotel Beaumont, I think it came out probably a little over two years ago now. But we've been dropping singles here and there, putting them out. Um, shout out to Dogs to the Problem. You know, me and him had a, a, a hell of a banger together. That's still banging. Uh, have, I think they real. We had Dalton on the show. Uh, yeah, I checked it out, man. We had Dalton on the show. Shout out Dalton. So go ahead. Tell us about the project with you and Dalton. So the project with me and Dalton, it was a song called Think They Real. And when I was writing it, instantly I thought of Dalton by the way he flowed. And I'm like, man, this dude here, like, it's going to be a different sound on there with me. And Man, it, it all came together just like it did in my head when I wrote it, you know. He blessed it. He did his thing with it. And 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 something else, like, every artist I, I collab with, you know, we make sure we give them their credits. Like, if it's on streaming services or whatever, you know, you're going we're going to take care of that side of it, you know, just to make sure the we all be heard. So, so talk to yeah. me a little bit about the business side of music. I think a lot of independent artists – and whoever may see this interview, they need to hear about the business side of being an independent artist. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, first and foremost, to be honest, you got to be ready to take some losses here and there. And you can't give up. You know, we didn't took uh, many of losses before, but we bounced right back with it also. And the comeback is always even better when you withstand, you know, the, the storm of it or whatever. Right. You know, constantly invest in yourself. You don't have to go clout chasing for the internet, doing some, you know, weird stuff, but just really just pushing your craft and believing in yourself, you know? So, so yeah, yeah. So I'm saying when I say the business side, I'm talking about the paperwork side of it for the, the uh, independent artists. Talk to them about that. Well, as far as the paperwork side of it, I'm still learning that myself because I'm taking it more serious now. But you definitely want to, you know, have some credentials like, Get your LLCs, your DBAs if you need to, you know, back up your whole thing that you started. You know, even though I didn't start BMT Hustlers, I treat it just like it's mine. You know, we in this together. So if one lose, we both lose. One win, we both win. Yeah, that, that's definitely. So, so uh, any, any, what do you have? I know you just had the single come out. Do you have anything new coming out with Schizo, BMT Hustlers? Or is the next thing you putting out? Uh, is it a is it a single solo project? Something with you and Schizo? Or tell me what what you got coming. Hopefully, the next project actually is some stuff with me and Schizo because we we kind of overdue for that again, you know. And the, and the people love that, you know, the way he raps his style, the way I come with it, you know, it comes together every time. But really, we just like I said, we trying to focus on this. Hotel Beaumont 2 album, we may put out a little EP beforehand just to, you know, keep people satisfied and keep us current. You know, we always got to stay current. So, yeah, you know, just try to stay working. In, in, today's, in today's music industry, you have to constantly be putting out music. And I tell people that the top artists put out music every two months. And that's how Man, look you. <laughs> so if you yeah. like them and you putting out music once a year, twice a year, you ain't gonna get where you need to be. You got to constantly be putting out music so people are hearing what you got to say. Yep. And if you I mean and the, the other thing too is if you just an artist that you know it's kinda hard for you to do that, try to knock out as many features as possible. You know if you even if it's like ten to twelve features a month, if possible. Do it, you know, knock it out. I, I remember uh, I remember when Lil Wayne was going through his thing with his label, and I don't think people knew he was going through something with the label then, but this was maybe about 10 years ago, and he was on every feature. Yeah. Lil Wayne was on every 
song out. If any song was out and it was a banger, Lil Wayne was on it. But he didn't have an album yeah. out, but he definitely was on every feature. Man, I remember one point Wayne on the top Billboard 100, I think, at one point Wayne was on 10 different songs on that Billboard. Like, that's work. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. He on everybody feature. So that's what you're saying. If you don't have a time, if you not, if right now you can't get to your project, just do features. Go find somebody yeah. to do the feature, go do the verse and knock it out. Stay relevant. That's it, man. That's it. Like, even I, I mean, if you feel like you can vibe, like some rappers tend to stay with a rap category. Some of us we can jump on an R and B song, a, a, a EDM song, maybe a little slight rock and roll or something, you know. But if the vibe matches with you, jump on it, you know. Put your blessings on it. I see the most successful rappers that I see jump on every type of yeah EDM R and B. Rap. I mean, you name the biggest rapper, and you go and you gonna hear you gonna hear their song or they them rapping on something else. Cause you gotta build a different yeah. fan base. Yes, sir. If you are gonna sell a million records, you got to build a different fan base from just that core group. And I, I think that's important for independent artists to learn. You know, hey, oh, yeah. you know, network with somebody else. You know, find somebody else that's independent or whatever their situation is that you like their style or you appreciate what they do and say, hey, let's get on the track together and make it happen. That's it, man. Like, I had, I have some people hit me up every now and then about features and stuff, and I'm it's, it's kind of one of the same things I heard dogs to say that I agree with. I'm not looking for money as far as – I'm not going to charge you to feature with me, at least not yet, but – while the opportunity's there, I recommend you know to utilize it. Yeah, and vice versa. I, I say I say this to to all independent artists that say they not charging for a feature. That's cool, but make sure if y'all gonna put that song out that you got your paperwork to get. Yeah, because it only takes twenty four hours for a song to go viral, and you don't have your paperwork together, the next thing you know, everybody doing the latest TikTok dance to yeah. your song, and he paid and you not. Yeah. Or she paid and you not, because women right now are knocking the doors down in the rap game, so I got to give them their props too. He paid or yeah. she paid and you not, and you like, hey, and he say, hey, you wasn't charging me, and it's like, if you tell somebody you're not charging them, you can't get That's what it is. When they start exactly. paid. Yeah. Now, and I, that's why I made sure I, I made sure I said it, you know what I'm saying? Right now, certain artists <clears throat> I'm not gonna charge at all. You know, even I could make a million dollars tonight and it's just certain artists because the love and the relationship was there. Right. I'm not finna charge them. You know, we it's always a vice versa thing, like I do it for them, they do it for me, you know. So let me tell you my opinion on that. If if okay. I, I'm I'm not an artist, I I can't I can't rap to save my life. But yeah. <laughs> if we was putting a song out and you say, hey, I'm not charging you, and the song blows up, I feel like if you come back asking for money after you said you charge wasn't charging me, then that's the yeah. problem. But I also yeah. feel like you shouldn't have to come back and ask me for money when yeah. you wasn't charging me and the song blew up. I feel like I should give you what's due anyway. And exactly. That's like the underlining in when it's like, hey, I'm not charging you, but you know what? I know you're not charging me, but if this song blow up and I get paid off of it, you're going to definitely get yours. That's it. And that's the, you know what? At the end of the day, sometimes we talk to each other like that in the studio with people we working with. It's just like an understanding. It's a, it's a mutual handshake, just like a handshake. You know what I mean? The word is the word, you know, and that's one thing BMT hustles. We we try to practice truth for hundred percent, man, you know, and stay on it. Yeah, so so tell me about some of the artists you're working with. Well, right now I'm not working with any of them right now because I just knocked out a few features with them. But okay. for the most part, they tell us about who you just knocked out features for. That's what we yeah, well, to know right now. Who did you knock like out said, features for? The last one, you know what I'm saying, was I-10 Slim. 
and my boy Giff, you know what I'm saying? Both are, Giff is actually from Detroit, you know, but he's out there in H-Town. Slim in H-Town, TCBE, you know, Third Coast Baby Entertainment. And, you know, they making some noise, and I I felt it was only right. Shout out to my homie, little Chris. He they manager, you know. Well, and you tell Chris we got to get him on the show. Oh, man, I already told him, man, and they ready. They ready. All right, well, we'll be reaching out to We'll get on that after we after we finish this. We'll yeah. get on that. But, yeah, they definitely got to get on the show if they making some noise. But continue. Yeah, for I'm sure. Sorry, I cut you off. Oh, it's good, brother. But, um, like I said, when I first came across Slim, I'm like, man, I got to get this cat on something, man, you know. So when I was writing Fuck It Up, I was like, man, this is the perfect song for both of them, you know, really, because Slim, Slim don't write. And I had to, I got to witness that for the first time when I got in the studio with him out there. Man, he's like a walking computer or something, you know. He, his bars is rambling, he going, and he stopped, he paused, he stopped, he paused, next thing you know, he done. So, and, so let me ask you about that type of style. What about you? Because we, we recently talked about, the uh, artist losing the art of writing and penmanship and really putting together a verse and a sixteen that go together. So yeah. So how do you how do you write? What are you? Are you off the you freestyle every verse or what do you do? How do you match up your sixteen to uh to your hook to make sure that you have a song that's flowing and agreeing, you know, throughout the whole song. Yeah, basically, man, I, I write, you know what I'm saying? I started off as freestyling, you know, I did that a lot. But then I felt like challenging myself, which the challenge was for me to write. So once I started writing, it's like I tried to get in tune with writing more and more. To some points, for a while, I was writing, man, at least two to three songs a week or something like that. Then my homeboy tell me, like, nah, dog, you got to step it up. Do, do this many in a day if you can. You know, if you could do this. You know, then you're really getting somewhere. I, I think it's and, important for artists to still write. I think the whole freestyle thing was taken out of context. I know, yeah. And I know in Houston, I know in Texas, the freestyle thing was like, you know, back in the 90s, hey, we can freestyle. And I know a lot yeah. of artists like to freestyle often, but but I, I still think it's it's a certain part of the art that's missing if if the penmanship of the of uh, being an artist goes out the window. I, yeah, no doubt. I'd like to see more artists take their time and write the song and make the hook match with the sixteen. For me, it's nothing worse. I ain't gonna say. Well, I think I think for a lot of people, it's nothing worse when you hit a hook and then you hit a sixteen and they have nothing to do with each other. And you like, I, yeah. I was about to jam about this. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I give that's why I give I T and Slim some credit at. Like, to say that he freestyles when he goes in the studio, the hooks and the 16s always make sense. Like, they go hand well, in hand. Well, you said he paused, though. You didn't. Say, you said he didn't. He don't just jump on there and just say whatever. Yeah, yeah, he don't go all the way He's through. He's taking his time and making a Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That, I mean, hey, when, if a guy can do it like that, he can do it like that. I'm just, I was just speaking on. Uh, for any artist or up and coming artist that see this, or younger artist that might want to be an entertainer, rapper, singer, or whatever, I want them to know it's okay to pick up the pen and. Hey, that that'll be my first. That'll be my first thing I tell them. Actually, you know, get that writing craft up. You know, um, if you have to write daily, write your ideas down about what kind, what you want the song to be about. If you have to. Um, Let's say, for instance, you want to talk about a slab, then you want it to make sense. I remember Lil Kiki said on a song, uh, man, I can't believe I forgot this. But basically, like, you know, the 16's got to make sense. You know what I mean? They, the hook will be talking about a horse or something, and then the 16 talking about a car. You know, they got to go together. And the only way you can really do that is by writing and stepping that pen game up. No, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think I think I love when artists put a song together and it comes out and it's a hit. You know, I think too many times they that these artists expect to get something out of nothing. You put five yeah. ten minutes in a song and you so busy telling people I freestyled the whole song but the song ain't going nowhere. Where you yeah. put forty five minutes and your brain on your pen and pad 
and you could have got the song out and it could have been a hit. You could have been number one. Yeah. You could have been number one. Yeah. So so back back to the BMT hustlers. Is that just is that a record label? Are y'all looking for artists? Is that just a group? What's going on? What is BMT Hustlers? Tell me what BMT Hustlers is, what it stands for, what the meaning is, all of that. Well, it started off um, with Schizo started and our boy B. B was our beat man. He was the in-house beat maker. And due to a rare, you know what I'm saying, disorder that he had, he passed away during Hurricane Rita. And it's really just representing Beaumont, man, a, a side of Beaumont that some people might not get to see or speak on some things that everybody might not know or something like that, you know. Um, representing our city, first and foremost, and then showing other people and letting them know it's okay to tell people that you're from Beaumont. I remember for the longest, man, when I first started out in this music thing, people was like they was ashamed to say they was from Beaumont, like, I knew some people, they'll leave Beaumont and go to Houston or Atlanta and say they was from Houston or Atlanta, you know, so we made sure we kept it Beaumont. Um, we do look for artists. It's not one of our things that we just go around and do, like the vibe got to be right. The, it's the person that's wanting to be down with it. They, they got to be right, you know. They got to have some motivation. They got to, you know, have some want for this. Because, like I said, we've been doing this, man. I think me and Schizo hooked up probably 2007 or eight, or probably before then, you know. And it's just been me and him, you know, promoting, taking care of everything, the footwork. And he does a whole lot, too. Yeah, so so what's the next What's the next level for BMT Hustlers? What's the, what, what are you guys looking for next? I mean, you guys have been putting in work well over 10 years, so... What is the next level? What are you guys looking for? What is like, hey, we here, we did this, we did that, and this is what we're looking for now because this is where we're going. Yeah, honestly, bro, we we trying to travel and, and do these stadium shows, sell out some shows, you know, and, and become international, really, like go worldwide. And wherever, wherever the plane could take us, we're trying to get there. So, and, so tell me, once COVID hit, how did that affect the shows? I mean... You was booked up, and then all of a sudden, COVID hit, and boom. Man, when COVID hit, well, put it like this. Before COVID hit, BMT Hustlers was going back and forth to Alexandria, Louisiana, like, for the past year or two. We had songs spinning in rotation on Kiss 98.7. Shout out DJ Flex. And, man, things was, it was good. You know, we got to go back and forth and do shows. And next thing you know, COVID snuck up. And opportunities was already waiting for Houston to do shows, but then the clubs closed down, uh, the shows stopped. So we had to take a different approach with it. And we was like, man, right now we're going to utilize this time to create music. But while we're trying to create music, we have these real life things going on around us, like COVID. And, you know, the, like I said, back to the injustice of these killings going on it was time to reflect on keeping it moving and it was a time to stay relevant also because everybody see the real life that was happening and is happening around us. And we was like, man, nobody really want to hear about, you know, your slabs or your jury and all that at those moments when these serious things are going on. So we was like, we just got to stick to the subject and speak on how we feel, you know? Right. So you're saying when, when, when things in the world are going on, your music basically transitions to reflect. You give them yeah. something to hold on to. Yeah, I mean, exactly. when everybody's stuck in the house and people losing their jobs, you got millions of people unemployed. Nobody, you're right. Nobody wants to hear about how fancy your car is. Yeah, you know, give them, give them some substance, something they can hold on to, and let them know, hey, it's gonna be all right. Things like that, man. We appreciate that type of music. Yeah, man, and like I said, that's the whole. Thing that BMT Hustlers was built off of is being able to be to make timeless music, classics, uh, something ten years, twenty years down the line they can go back and play Helen Keller, or they could play uh, Fuck It Up, or they could play Cause and Effect for sure. You know, it, it don't seem like none of this stuff is gonna slow down, but we got to keep up. 
Right. So you hold yourself to a high standard when you putting out albums and singles to make sure you putting out something that today they bumping it in a car and tomorrow it's not even. So you saying you want your music to be timeless, like 10 years from yeah. now, like, hey, remember when Big Luck put that track out? Man, put that yeah. something the youngsters can relate to. Yeah, for sure, man. And uh, speaking of the youngsters, I had a, a song I threw my nephew on, that boy Cam. It was a song called Rolling Loud. And this was before COVID and all that. We was trying to catch the eyes of the Rolling Loud Festival. But I didn't think about it, how big that it was becoming until after the song dropped. Because he's a youngster, you know, and he owned the song, so he promoted it to his friends, and they all jamming. And next thing I know, SoundCloud shooting up with the numbers on that one song. And I'm like, man, I dropped nine songs with that. But I had to just sit and think the time that they was in and that we were in, you know, youngsters like to do what they do and smoke whatever. So it went with the time. Right. But we, we, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna talk about SoundCloud because right now all your music on be- It's crowded streaming. Yeah, all your music yes, sir. gonna be on crowded streaming. We ain't worried about SoundCloud or none of those other streaming apps right there. We we strictly crowded. So everybody just know from now on, any music you have, any artists you have, they need to be on crowded streaming, and we pay artists for their streams. And any artist that hear this, download the app and send your music over to crowded, crowded music share at gmail.com, and we'll get your artist profile. We'll get your artist profile done, and when your streams come in, we'll definitely get you paid. But continue, For sure, man. continue. So tell us about tell us about that. Well, with the um, I tell you what, I tell you about this. Like when when y'all came out with the crowded streaming, it was one of those things that I kind of had been hoping for. You know, to be black owned like it is and moving the way it is also. Because I think when I first started like downloading the app and stuff, and I watched it grow. You know, it used to have a few little glitches and this and that in it or whatever, but now it's steady climbing. And like, you know, the conversation me and you had, you know, we don't want, we could put it out there now, especially artists in Beaumont, like get on it, you know, ju- download the app, send your music to the uh, email address. Cause you know how it is when things take off, then you have those people who tend to feel like they were left out when really they wasn't. They had an opportunity. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this about any other streaming app. They all started somewhere. Exactly. Uh, we are probably, from what I know of, the only streaming app that actually has roots and relationships with people who do music and produce and things like that. And um, we have definitely, as a team, reached out to everybody saying, hey, we working and we know where this is going. Just yeah, running. and I mean, that's all we can do. You know, that's all. Yes, sir. We can, we can just provide the opportunity for everybody, and and hey, it is what it is. For sure, <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. We provided the opportunity, and we still provide an opportunity for everybody. But I mean, we running. We gonna keep going. The app is launched. You downloaded it. It plays music. It's free. It's free yeah. to download. Artists is free for artists to it's free for artists to to create an artist profile and get paid. Yeah, and you don't have to compete with the big dogs. You don't have to compete with all of that. So I feel like, hey, it's the right thing to do. Master P, he started selling albums out the trunk, and look what happened. Yeah. So just like I was saying, I mean, for artists, it's it's a grind, just like it is for us. Hey. Every day we got to be working, just like I believe independent artists. Every day you got to be working. If you are an artist, rapper, singer, whatever you do, every day you got to be working on your craft. There, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say this real quick. There's no such thing as failure. There are only quitters. If you yeah. never quit, you'll always win. Yeah, 100% right. Yeah, even, yeah. even with the whole BMT Hustlers movement. If y'all don't quit... Yeah, well, y'all already winning. COVID slowed everybody down. Tell us, tell us a little bit about what you think artists should be doing 
right now or how artists who are performing every night or every other night, what are artists doing now that COVID is, are they doing just, that COVID is hitting, slowed down the shows? Are they just doing um, verses? Uh, like on Instagram, I see some of the bigger artists doing the verses against each other. Are they just yeah. doing features? I see Boosie, uh, Lil Boosie had a post where he was like, hey, I'm cutting my features in half for COVID. If you want to do a feature with me, some artists doing Instagram live shows. I mean, what, what, what do you think and what are artists doing right now for COVID to, you know, keep the ball rolling? Because I know most artists, especially independent artists, they eat off of performance. So what are they doing now? Honestly, I I think now, like, one of the new ways that they're doing is getting out more, you know, as much as possible. You know, they might be masked up or whatever. You know, you got to protect yourself while you're out in the fight. But I think some of them are, is coming more to reality of how much they do need the fans. So if you just was used to doing shows and get the money and go home, you know, today's reality is a little different. Or like you said, a lot of them are putting videos on IG Live and stuff and getting the fans to tune in. I think I even seen one where Erica Badu did like a, a private concert or something for like a dollar. And you go in and watch her concert. That was some dope stuff, though, you know. Um, and I, I actually heard of some artists using this time to expand their craft. Like, they learning uh, live instruments now. Or they learning how to run stuff, or work stuff in the studio and mess with beats and stuff. You know, instead, put it like this. They can't be lazy right now. Right now is not a time to be lazy. Right now, we should be soaking up as much as possible to help out with our crafts. So, so what do you think about the artists? Because I find this with independent artists. Some of them um, get famous too fast. And let me break this down when I say famous too fast. They put out a song. It does okay. And all of a sudden, they get the big head. They forget about their fans. They don't go back to work. They don't put out new music. What's your advice to them? Building the catalog up. Gift certified. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it ASAP. Up. Yeah. You know, like, you can't put it like this here. If you got a song that took off overnight, let's say, we know how that works, but you got a song that just blew up and you got a nice little check from it. And then you say, I'm going to quit working as much. I'm going to quit working so hard. That's the worst idea ever. Because the work that you put in to make that song is what got you there. So I'm like this here. I'm going to refer to myself on this one. If, let's say, for instance, tomorrow I wake up and, I got a million voicemails for cause and effect and they want to do something for that song and give me a check and whatever. Then believe you me, I'm going to go back to the pad and write as much as I can, you know, and I'm going to keep it right anyways, but just keep evolving into it. I'm going to I'm 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 go into two things and get your opinion on this. Uh, that was the song Old Town Road came out a couple months ago or last year, went viral. Yeah. And, and, um, Lil Nas X just tweeted recently, hey, I got to release another song. The Old Town Checks, the Old Town Road Checks are running out. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, he tweeted that and everybody's like, oh, I guess we can expect some new music. Then second thing, then I'm going to let you elaborate on both of these points. There's a, a, a interview where Jay-Z is talking about his career and how when he was with Rockefeller, he was already established. Jay-Z been the man. And he yeah. told all the artists on there, um, on Rockefeller, hey, you guys right now need to put out as much music as possible because 50 Cent is getting ready to come out. And when he comes out, he's going to be the hottest thing out and y'all going to be on the back burner for a couple years. So right now, put out as much music as you can. And uh, apparently they didn't listen, but I seen the interview where he said, and he said, hey, I told him he didn't listen. And then next thing you know, in the club dropped and they was all put on the shelf. So what yeah. do you think about, that's, that's what I'm saying when you say keep putting out music, like Lil Nas X saying, hey, these old town road checks, you know, and then we got Jay-Z, who's a billionaire now, 
who saw the vision and said, hey, you guys need to start putting out music because there's other guys coming to take over. Hey, I agree 100% both. And the thing with Lil Nas X, as big a success as he had, he should have had, like, you know, something else to follow up, at least three or four more songs ready to go. You know, not saying you have to drop all of them at once, but he should have had something else ready to go with that type of success that he got from that. I mean, you got to remember, he got a lot of, you know, flack for that at first, too. He kind of pissed off the um, country uh, community, you know, saying that he was kind of stealing their style and this and that. But well, as far as Jay's... Country, country as far as people as, rap too. We need we need we need a category for music. We need that's it. a category for music. And for not not country rap, hip hop, or anything like that. They need a category for this song went viral. Because that's what Old Town Road did. And, yeah. and that's what we was talking about earlier with the clean music, the fun music. He released the clean, fun track that you could play it in the classroom or the nightclub, and people was gonna have a good time to it. So, yeah, I think he had a good idea with that, but he did not have the proper follow up. Yeah, and and yeah, and he did. And I'm 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 reading the comments at the bottom. You know, like Dogs pointed out that he was on some remixes and stuff, which is true. But at the end of the day, some of the little Nas X fans want to hear like just him. You know. And and that's that's the kind of sticky thing with with fans, you know. If you can't keep going with them, then they tend to leave you. They 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 well, slip away. Well, that's what we were just talking about when we said you got to perfect your craft. Yeah, like, I'm not I'm not a I'm not a rapper. I'm no none of that. If I was to ever have a hit, if I was to ever have a hit on on flute by accident, <laughs> I would reinvest all the money and don't expect to hear from me again. You know, like, don't See, expect to hear from me again. That was it. I appreciate it. And I'm out the door. And maybe that's yeah. what some of these rappers need to think about, surround themselves with a team and say, hey, really, I, 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 I made this song and I'm not really a rapper, but I'm about to make a whole bunch of money. So what can I do next? Because I, yeah. I think even established rappers need to look at having a portfolio of different things. Yeah, because you—I mean, you can't—you yeah. you can't. It's not going. What's a career in the rap game? How long does it last? Man, honestly, from from things I didn't pay attention to, I didn't see some people last five, ten years. Look like now the ones that can last a little longer than that, they you know they perfected some stuff around. Who who has lasted? Give me give me your top five rappers who've lasted over ten years without doing anything else. I don't want to hear no rappers and actors. I'm talking about a rapper that's lasted 10 years. Gucci, man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot, man. Gucci, man, Wayne. Um, of course, Jay-Z. Wait, 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 um, Jay-Z, but Jay-Z has multiple businesses. Yeah, 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 you're that's right. You're right. You said strictly rapping. Yeah, Dr. Dre had the chronic... Then he had what was it? The Chronic Two Thousand. Yeah, then he had beats, and I mean, okay, Jeezy. I see Jeezy. Jeezy has been Jeezy has been relevant. Who else you got? What? Man, uh, I'm sitting there thinking about Nas. You know, Nas is been in there for a while. Well, Nas is in a different category, in my opinion, because Nas is like, Nas is Nas. Yeah. And he's done, he's done movies. He was in Belly. Yeah, but, yeah. But let me, let me, let me say this about Nas and Jay-Z. About them being rappers. They never came out with the, with all the noise and all the, uh, Nas got Hennessy endorsements. He does have that. But they never came out looking like, um, I don't want to use the term clowns, but they never, you know, they always yeah. had a business style to it where they made you respect them. Yeah. yeah. You know, they always done things to where you kind of had to respect them on a different level. Like I was saying, 
Jay Z was one of the first rappers wearing suits and you know getting dressed up. Ti dresses up and you know they, they just had a business aspect to where it was like, yeah, okay, he's not the same as just a rapper jumping around on stage. Yeah, yeah, and I can I can agree with that. You know, at the end of the day, it, it that lasting. I think that that ten year effect. The longer it, it all goes with how you carry yourself and the moves that you're making. You know. You necessarily don't have to jump in movies. Uh, like I see a lot of artists now, especially like I got teenage kids, so I, I get to stay up to date with like the younger stuff that's going on. And I notice a lot of the young rappers that my kids like, they actually started off on YouTube, like doing pranks and different little things like that. Like it was different for me seeing that because like with me growing up and being into hip hop, we didn't see that type of stuff. You know, you either you had some bars or you didn't, you know, you tried or you didn't. So it, it was, it's like the game changed constantly. Yeah. So, so that, I'm glad you mentioned that about the game change. Cause I think that's one thing that we've actually been able to see from now yeah. to 2020. The, if you, we were talking about the rap game, the rap game has definitely changed. It went from oh, yeah. naughty by nature, Tretch and, you know, then we seen we had the baggy clothes, the crisscross. Then we seen uh, people dressing a little nicer. Now we see some of the youngsters with the skinny jeans and the tight shirt, yeah. which I know most of us who are a little older, we don't really, you know, that ain't our yeah. style. But I'm not knocking what they doing uh, with dyeing their hair and things like that. You know, let them express the self, they self the way they want to, you know. Yeah, Just no doubt. what we did. Yeah, and that's and that's kind of like how hip hop works, you know. Uh, it's it's constantly evolving, and as it evolves, you have people that can adapt, and you have people that can't. You know, it, like even some of the older guys that's around my age that been rapping forever, they still can adapt with this younger generation. They could go bar for bar with them. You know, they'll sit there and have a hook writing contest or so. I, I see, I see some of these. Uh, established rappers, though, they ain't slick, because I see them. And what they do is, as soon as a, a new rapper is coming up, and he's hot, and they know he's going to be the next big thing, they go and jump yeah. a song with him. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of like they doing him a favor, but really, they doing the old, old rapper a favor by letting the new fans, because this younger rapper is actually bringing in a newer generation, they let oh yeah yeah hear him and say okay now we like him too yeah I mean yeah no I, doubt. I, I don't I don't have a problem with it I think it's an excellent excellent marketing tool I think more rappers need to say hey you know what that young fellow over there is doing something and we're gonna do a song together because the young rappers want to work with the established rappers so the established yeah. rappers need to realize hey. They coming, whether you like it or not. Exactly. He coming, whether you like his style or you don't. Or you like and that's, he coming, and he bringing his yeah. fans. So you want his fans to buy your record too, or you just want to fade yeah. out? Yeah, exactly. And that's like one of the things, like when the, the youngsters really started getting in it, man, and you heard a lot of older rappers saying, man, these young boys, this, this, and that, you know, talking bad about them. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this because we calling them we calling them youngsters, but we can't. Because really, they becoming, they they young men. They yeah. men and they growing up doing what everybody else is doing. I see you 1909, 1909 say, exactly, got to bridge the gap. If yes, they sir. Don't bridge the gap, and that's why they have a problem with it. Instead of dissing the young man, I think they should have said, "Hey, let me show you how to do that." Just like Busta Rhymes. Remember him and Chris Brown had the track a while back. Chris Brown, yeah, first time rapping, and he said on the track, he said, "Hey, Breezy, let me show you how to do that there when you're doing that." And yeah, Busta Rhymes killed it on the rap verse. You know, I think that's more like bridging the gap. Hey, you don't need to get on here and just say whatever you feel like or just smoke or drink and get on here and just talk. No, let's let's sit down and get back to the 16 matching the hook. 
Yeah. <laughs> and if, and I think if the old, if the older established rappers would teach these young guys the art of rap, maybe we could bridge that gap a little bit. Oh yeah, and some of them catching it, bro. Some of them catching it quick. You know, like they they catching on to it. They seeing what's going on. Like I remember when the Migos came out, and you know everybody was saying mumble rappers. And I'm thinking to myself, let me, I'm going to give them a chance and see what they're talking about, where they're going. And they, I'm not going to lie, they surprised me. But that's just how it is in this business. So, so this is this thing on, on mumble rap. I personally would like to at least understand what, what people are saying. I don't think they are mumble rappers. I do think they had their own style. But I also think a lot of people try to steal my style. And I, I think, and, and I've said this on multiple interviews, I think that's one of the reasons why so many artists who are looking for a deal can't get it. Because you're too yeah. busy trying to sound like somebody else. Nobody else wants to hear, nobody else wants to hear you sounding like somebody else. Yeah. You know, if you get on there, that nursery rhyme rap or something we already heard, Give us something different, and the most successful artists sound different. If you name the top five most successful artists right now, they all have a different sound. Even if they do yeah. the same track, you can tell who is who and why they sound different. Yeah, for sure. And that's the, that's the same thing that I was saying. Like, If everybody comes out right now sounding like the Migos, what's the point of buying their stuff? We already got the Migos, you know. Exactly. That's why that's why once again I tend Slim the way he flow, different. Schizo the way he flow, different. Gift, different, you know. Um, so many youngsters, man, that I'm coming across like that's that's doing this rap thing, and some of them haven't even been in a studio before, bro. Like I just met a little dude today. You know, he told me, he's like, bro, I ain't never been inside of a studio. You know, like, what, what can I do to get there? Hey, I tell you what, just I'll let me tomorrow. I'm going to lead you the way, you know. Right. So you consider he's, yourself one of the artists, you know, bridging the gap. Yeah. Like, I have no problem, man, working with nobody. Like, young, old, you know, but I try to focus. I ain't going to say I try to focus, but I pay attention to the younger generations that's coming up behind me. Like I said, I got teenage kids. Hell, my son, he be trying to put a few bars together, you know what I'm saying? And I got to respect it. You know, he might rap about some Fortnite stuff, but I ain't going to shun him down. You know, I'm going to lift him up on it. Hey, hey, Fortnite has a huge following. He make the right Fortnite song and y'all on the way. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm finding out. <laughs> yeah, Fortnite, Fortnite, you let him do, hey, embrace that Fortnite song. You can yeah. play Fortnite and you might stop rapping. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Hey, we're going to definitely have to get you back on here. I hate to cut it short, but right now we got to get ready for DJ 4500 and King Lee on the Discharge show. Discharge poured, slow and poured on Roku TV. Grind, yes, Grind City TV. And we definitely want to check them out. So if you have Roku TV, download the app. Check out DJ4500 and King Lee C. Check they show out 1030 Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I believe on Saturday too. Make sure you're checking them out. Definitely got to get sure. you back here. Any artist that's seeing, here, that's seeing this interview, make sure you download Crowded Music streaming app. Send your music to crowdedmusicshare at gmail.com. We'll get your artist profile created. When your streams go up, we'll definitely get you paid. And you can find all Big Luck, BMT Hustlers music right now on Crowded Music Streaming app. If you're looking for independent artists, if you're a consumer of music and you're looking for independent artists to listen to, download Crowded Music. It's free, it's free to listen to and find you somebody that you haven't heard on the mainstream, but they definitely putting in that work. I appreciate everybody for tuning in with us tonight. I appreciate everybody commenting and everybody who watched the interview. Big luck. I appreciate you jumping in the crowded room for us. Can't wait to have you back. Appreciate it, man. Anything you want to say? Appreciate it. Hey, man, I appreciate y'all with the opportunity, bro. Big shout out to everything y'all doing for showing love to all these independent artists. I'm going to make sure I mention y'all name like the Bob around here. Put everybody on it. 
And, uh, man, shout out to all the artists I didn't work with and all the future artists that's, you know, that we're going to work with. And, you know, keep doing what y'all doing out there, man. Don't let nothing stop y'all. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. All right, brother. Uh, this is the life I chose. I found out I had a gift. Now I'm getting some dough. Come on. on the road with this bitch.